Holy, 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 are you Lord God Almighty? Holy, 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 are you Lord God Almighty? Blessings and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power it might be unto you, Lord God. Holy, 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 are you Lord God Almighty? Holy, 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 are you Lord God Almighty? Blessings and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, Honor and power and might be unto you, Lord God. Amen, amen. Good morning, good morning. How are you all doing? Got to give that, got to give that praise. Got to give that worship, right? Amen. I pray that y'all woke up with the praise and worship on your heart, mind, and soul for the Lord. It brings joy and pleasure and happiness and everything when you when you sing unto the Lord. You start your mornings off like that. You're going to and bound to have an awesome, great day. Even if troubles come your way, it, it will not steal your joy. Amen. So good morning. Good morning. This is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading. We are getting through the Bible in one entire year. We are accomplishing sometimes the unaccomplished, unaccomplishable, because a lot of people cannot get through the whole entire Bible. They, they, they pause, they take a break, they start over, but we are doing it. We are actually doing it. So this is good. And we give God, that glory. We thank you for, we thank him for his anointing and appointing us to be able to do this. So we are in Isaiah 10, starting with verse 20 today, 11, chapter 11. And then in chapter 12, we're just reading verse 1 through 6. And then 2 Corinthians 6, starting with verse 14. And then chapter 7, verses 1 through 16. Okay? All right, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, creator of heaven and earth, we just come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We glorify you and we thank you, Lord God, for covering us with the blood of Christ, for protecting us and placing a hedge of protection around us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that you have saw fit for us to breathe again, that you have woke, woken us up one more day to praise, to worship, to glorify you, Lord God, to be about your work, Lord Jesus. We are here and we are ready to labor for you, Lord God Almighty. We just thank you and we glorify you that you have chosen us that you have anointed us, that you have appointed us, and that you have approved us to believe in you, to trust in you, and to work in you, to work for you, to labor for you, Lord God, to win souls for you, Lord Jesus. And so we thank you. We, con we continue to ask for the wisdom, the, the increase in wisdom, knowledge, understanding, we continue to ask for the instructions and directions that we need for in this day, Lord God, July 8th, 2020. We ask that you pour into us the plans and the purpose, pour into us your will for our life, Lord God. We want to be willing and obedient spirits to you, Lord Jesus. And we are here, we say that our heart belongs to you lord god and only you and that you alone deserve all praise glory and honor and we pray this in the presence of jehovah and the spirit of jesus yahweh 
In Jesus' holy, mighty name, amen. Amen. Good morning. Glory, glory, glory. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. Amen. Oh, Lord. Don't you love it when you get to a place to where you can't fake it? You know how they say, fake it till you make it? <laughs> I never got that saying. I never really got it because it was really hard for me to fake happiness. It was really hard. Uh, you know, uh, it was so hard for me to fake that stuff. <laughs> but I can, I can stand today and say I am not faking it. This is real, bona fide, joy, glory, happiness. And I am praying that for you all, that you all receive that joy and happiness and glory in the Lord. Amen. All right. So let's move on to Isaiah 10. starting with verse 20. All right, Isaiah 10, verse 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption, even determined, in the midst of all the land. Therefore, thus said the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Asrian. He shall smite thee with a rod and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. For yet a very little while, and in the indignation shall cease, and mine anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Arab. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. He is come to Aiath. He is passed to Migron at Mishmash. He hath laid up his carriages. They are gone over the passage. They have taken up their lodging at Geba. Rama is afraid. Uh, G Gibeah. Of Saul is fled. Lift up thy voice, O daughter of Galim. Cause it to be heard unto Laish. O poor Anathoth. Mad Madmanah is removed. The inhabitants of Gebim gather themselves to flee. As yet shall he remain at Nob that day. He shall shake his hand against the mount of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, shall lock the bow with terror, and the high ones of stature shall be hewn down, and the haughty shall be humbled. And he shall cut down the thickets 
of the forest with iron, and Lebanon shall fall by a mighty one. So my my commentary So Galim, Laish, and Anathoth are towns of the prophet Jeremiah. They were small towns just north of Jerusalem. And then Madma and Gebum are still not identified, but they were probably villages just north of Jerusalem. So it's talking about villages. What's going to happen to certain villages, I guess, in Jerusalem? I had to look down and read that. So verse 33 and 34 says, The oracle ends with a sudden reversal. Asriya marched on Jerusalem, but the army met with destruction. They will become trees. A cedar from Lebanon is implied by the final line. That will be failed by none other than God himself. The Azrians had been the axe in God's hand against his people, but God will wield an axe against them. So again, I, uh, I guess here they are, God is still, he was still using his enemies to... I guess, um, put his people in check, but he's saying that they will, they will not be able to, uh, um, win or whatever. And, uh, that God will redeem the children of Israel, I guess. That's what he's saying. That he will redeem them. He will, he, he, he was using the enemies to put the children of Israel in check and that, but that the children of Israel will be redeemed. They will be, you know, uh, corrected and, and, and come out saved, I guess. I don't know any other way to, uh, say that. <laughs> so, so a lot was going on right now. Uh, with 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 Isaiah and the children of Israel, because you know the children of Israel they they steady kept finding themselves in trouble, right? And kept repeating, repeating and repeating over and over again. So God will use whatever He can to correct you, discipline you, and uh, uh, He will He will use whatever He can to get you back in alignment with him and in a righteous standing with him. Amen. All right, so chapter 11. And don't forget, make comments, everyone. Make comments, communicate, collaborate, and connect. You know, um, don't let me be the only one speaking. And... That invite, if you want to be on live with me, on my on the live, reading along with me, you have to message me the night before and let me know that you want to do that. I'm not one of one. Of, I'm not one of those people that will just choose somebody and say, "Hey, just come on my live." I'm not like that. I, I want willing spirits. If you want to do it. You got to let me know. All right. So Isaiah 11, if you are just coming on, good morning. We are in Isaiah chapter 11. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, 
and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he lay, slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. That's how come they could not stand what Jesus was talking. Because the rod of his mouth. So every time Jesus spoke. So y'all know this is speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is prophesying of the Lord God Almighty, the Lord Jesus that, that will come. And, and, that's, and, and, and now we see why they just could not stand him <laughs> they could when you got when you got the spirit of the lord in you and using your mouth as a rod you know that means you're correcting you're rebuking you're 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 uh disciplining through your mouth like when when the lord god uses your mouth to be a rod and and your breath of of your lips to slay the wicked, they are not going to like you. <laughs> they did not like Jesus. They didn't want Jesus around. And so you, you have to face this. You have to understand this. You have to be on, on and, and then you, you, you just got to allow him to gird you with the righteousness. He was, he, his righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins so he he wasn't moved by sight of his eyes and he wasn't moved by the hearing of his ears because they would they would belittle him they would talk about him they would try to do things to him they would try to trap him they 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 did all kinds of things and so if he was if he came and he was moved by the sight of his eyes or moved by his ears, he wouldn't have made it. So we gotta we 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 gotta ask we gotta ask Jesus to cover us with his essence. Because that way we are not moved by our eyesight. We are not moved by our ears, what we hear. Because if you are used, if you are a messenger and you are used in this capacity. You are used, your, your, your mouth is a rod and, and the breath of your lips slay the wicked. You, you have to, you have to understand they not going to like you. <laughs> They're going to talk about you. They're going to try to trap you up. They're going to try to do all kinds of things because the moment you open your mouth, the moment you open your mouth, they're being convicted. They're being, I mean, all all kinds of things are being done to their heart and to their mind and to their soul because he's using you to be that rod to slay the wicked with the breath of your lips. <laughs> Amen. And, and you and you can't be afraid. No fear. No fear. It says he will be the branch and grow wait he is the rod out of the stem of jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots so we are we are we have been engrafted and we are the root we are the roots we are the branches that come out of jesus like jesus then created he was the first fruit and so you you got to know and understand they're not going to like you. They not they're going to talk about you. So you can't be moved by your eyesight or what you hear. You can't be moved by the hearsayers. You you can't be you can't be moved by the naysayers. You can't be moved by those that try to trap you up 
and 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 accuse you falsely and things like that. They 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 accused him falsely. Everything that they did to Jesus, they're going to do to you. That spirit, that spirit of the Pharisee and the and the Sadducees or Sadducees, how you say that? That spirit still is around us in people every day. You know? So you you got to you you got to know you got to know and understand who you are <laughs> and don't be moved by what they say and do you be that messenger you 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 allow the words to come out of your mouth you 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 allow Jesus to use you as that rod be that rod be be that slayer of the wicked, you know? Amen. So good morning if you are just coming on. We are in Isaiah 11, chapter 11, and now we're at verse 6. It says, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them and the cow and the bear shall feed their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp and the wean child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Asriah and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river and shall smite it in the seven streams and make men go over dry shod. And there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Asria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of of Egypt. So even though we are in America, even though we are in America, we have to under we have to understand that when God dispersed his people, because that's what he did, he dispersed his people. Ooh, the Holy Spirit is all over me. He dispersed his people out and they ended up being spread out. Especially, I know y'all know the story of the Tower of Babel. Especially when that happened. Uh, he and, and he's prophesying, he's saying his people is going to be spread out. The people are going to be spread out and they're going to be dispersed and they're going to be all over. But he's going to he's going to end up calling all his people back. So 
a lot, all of us, a lot of us, especially people of God, we are descendants of this disbursement. When, when, when Noah came, when Noah came, he had three sons. And when the flood came, Noah, his, his wife and his three sons and their wife, they ended up repopulating the earth. Okay. Then they ended up going their separate ways. They, they ended up going their separate ways. And so you, you, and that's why he says the four corners of the earth, because they ended up spreading out and, and then he changed, then God came and changed the languages because of the tower of Babel, because of one of the sons decided to take his people and just, and, and build this tower of Babel. So and I hope I'm saying that right, <laughs> but God dispersed the people of God even more with, with the changing of the languages. So now here we are, we're, we're all spread out and we're all over the globe. And so God is saying he's, he's going to call all his people. We're, we're going to end up all in one place. We're going to end up back in one place. And so from Jerusalem all the way, even to America, the Lord has his people and he knows who you are because he done already called you and marked you. His name is already in your forehead. He done called you. He done marked you. He done, he done anointed and approved you uh, before you was born from your mother's womb and we're all spread out. So that's why it says, there, there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people. So, so he's, he's going to start calling us even more stronger where we're all going to end up in one place. We're all going to end up coming together in one place, you know, and especially when the coming of the Lord come, when coming, when that day comes of the coming of the Lord, and we all lift up together. We all come together and lift up. Man, that's gonna be a <laughs> that's gonna be a glorious day. That's gonna be a glorious day. And we will be able to see. We will have awareness. We will be. We we will understand what's going on and what's happening. You know, and we will have no. We will not be afraid. Amen. So anyone else is going to speak? Anyone else going to make comments? Good morning. If you are just coming on, we are in Isaiah. And so now we're in, in chapter 12. Only has six verses. So uh, we're getting ready to read chapter 12, Isaiah 12. It says, and in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. So Beverly, Beverly says, like you said, all throughout this scripture, it speaks of the coming of the Messiah. It speaks of his heritage through the lineage of Jesse. Yes, amen. It does. It sure does. <clears throat> and so also understand that the prophecy, the prophecy of the coming of the Lord here is also the prophecy of the coming of the Lord. Even now, the coming of the Lord is coming like, and, and, and it even says a second time, a second time to recover the repent, remnant of his people. So he he's coming again. He is on his way. Beverly says, it tells us that he will have the spirit of the Lord. The spirit is wisdom, the spirit of understanding and the spirit of counsel. Yes. And that's even for today too, as well. You know, 
the spirit of mind and the spirit of the reverence of the fear of the Lord. Amen. And, and know that if you are a messenger of God, if you are a child of God that is, is laboring in the Lord, he is going to pour these same spirits in you. All that is going to rest on Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. So, uh, ch chapter 12, verse two, well, I'll start over chapter 12. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation, I will trust, and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. So as you can see, this prophecy, those are Jesus' characteristics. Yes. <laughs> and that's why, that's why I pray, I say, if you look up essence, if you look up the word essence, we want the essence of Jesus Christ in us. We want the essence of Jesus Christ um, to, to, to clothe us because we want the characteristics of Jesus. Chapter 12 is about worship and praise. Yes, it's about worship and praise. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a worship and praise of, of also prophesying of what we are to do now, even today, you know, throughout all history. From the time that Jesus came the first time, Jesus came the first time he came, he was born of a virgin. He, he, he did his ministry and then he died and then he rose again and then he went home, but he's coming a second time. There is a second time that he's coming and, and we are to glorify him and thank him because the coming this is preparing us for his coming even now, for his coming. We are in that season. We are in that time where we need to be looking out for the coming of the Lord and be aware and, and stay in tuned and plugged in and, and stay in alignment with the Lord Jesus because he is on his way. And so... He's saying, you know, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, sing unto the Lord, cry out and shout, O inhabitations of Zion, you know, and every time Beverly, you know, you know, I'm mentioning it, you know, I'm gonna mention it, Beverly, but every time I hear, see that word Zion, what am I going to mention? <laughs> And I'm going to refer the people to go watch what? The Matrix. <laughs> you got to watch The Matrix. Like, you have to look at that movie. Uh, Beverly says, he is praising God for salvation and joy and singing praises, recognizing the works and the power of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Yes. So if you if you're not doing that now, you need to recognize the power and the works of the Lord and praise him for it in this day. And and, and every time every time they mention Zion Beverly, I'm going to I'm going to I'm I'm going to I'm going to go do <laughs> yeah, Beverly, I'm going to go do a, a a matrix uh 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 a whole uh matrix um night just just pull up all three all three of the movie matrix and i'm just gonna watch those again you know um 
So if you are new watching, y'all have to understand if you if you saw the matrix, but you saw it with physical eyes, you only saw it as entertainment. You need to go watch it again after reading these. We've been reading in the word uh you know for a while and and you'll you'll understand now. You'll see the make the movie matrix in a whole different light now um after reading the words of God. Um you'll you'll understand. All right, so good morning. Um, if you are just coming on, we just got through reading Isaiah 10, starting with verse 20. We read chapter 11 and 12. And so now we'll read 2 Corinthians 6, starting with verse 14. And then we'll read 7, because 7 is verses 1 through 16. So we'll read 6, starting with verse 14, and then chapter 7. Amen. Beverly, I wish we could literally meet from a, in a halfway point somewhere and have a whole matrix uh, night. You and I just, you know, in, invite some other sisters or something. Because I know you live, I, I forgot where you say you live, but we we come meet in the middle. <laughs> have a Have a road trip and meet in the middle. And have a whole matrix night. <laughs> Amen. All right. So 2 Corinthians 6, starting with verse 14. Says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? That would be so awesome. I live in Georgia. So yeah, Georgia. Yeah, we could we could meet in the middle somewhere. Do a road trip. <laughs> meet in the middle. Amen. All right. Um, verse 15. And what concord hath Christ with Balal? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Amen. That would be a serious trip. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Y'all. Let, 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 let's just plan one of those, like, like, let's come together, sisters, brothers, you know, it could be sort of, um, sort of, a uh, uh, inspiring, motivating, cause I, I want a road trip. I've been wanting a road trip and I actually tried to just recently plan one with my sister, my, uh, my birth, one of my birth sisters. And then that fell through because of what's going on and things like that, you know, whatever. But, but yeah, let, I would love to like literally plan to meet in the middle from George, from, from, I'm in Bog Springs, Texas, Dallas County, from Dallas County, between Dallas County and Georgia, and literally find a place in the middle for us to come together and meet. That would really be awesome. That would really be awesome. I, I I don't know how that happened, but the Holy Spirit just led us there. <laughs> but that would be great. That would be awesome. So verses 14 through 18. We're in 2 Corinthians 6, verses 14 through 18. Really, 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 um, you know, throughout all the messages of Paul throughout all the letters of Paul. Paul 
makes it a point. He makes it a point to make sure the people in Ephesus, Corinthians, everywhere he travels, he makes it a point that he makes the understanding that we are not to be a part of the world. We are not like them. He makes it a point to distinguish the difference between people of God and people of the world. And and throughout all his, I mean, from, from Acts, Romans, and now 1 Corinthians, and now 2 Corinthians, he continues to repeat that specific message that we are not of the world. So he says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. If they don't want to believe in the Lord God Almighty, we are not to be like a part of them. We are not, if if we go somewhere and we don't preach the message, we don't preach the message, we don't put the message out there, we done told of the Lord Jesus Christ, we done told the goodness of the Lord God Almighty, and then they still decide they don't believe, don't don't try to force them. Don't try to force them, don't try to make them, don't go drink coffee with them, trying to, to, to you know, if you put that, especially if your mouth is a rod, you done already put it out there. And they still decide they are unbelievers. We are not to be equally yoked with them. You know? You're not to go and sit down and drink coffee, you know, doing what you can to try. You're not to 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 to, to try to make deals with them. You're not to try to, you know, just let them be. You speak your message wherever God tells you to go. You speak your message. You tell what you need to tell. And he says, don't be unequally yoked with them. And then he says, come from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Come from among them. So once you realize that you are surrounded by unbelievers and once you realize that they are not going to change their heart or mind, no matter what what comes out of your mouth, or anything like that, you come from among them. Don't hang out with them. Don't don't sit there and 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 linger in that city or in that town or in that neighborhood. You know, you come from among them. And 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 if you say, well, what if I live there? What if I what if my house lives there? Believe me, you pray enough. God will either move you or he going to move them. You know, you don't worry about it, but you don't go hang out with them. You don't go drink coffee with them. You don't sit there and, 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 uh, you know, cause you, do you know, you can have unbelievers literally sitting in the same church house as you and they don't believe it, it's, it's a lifestyle that they, 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 they decide that they want to, they want to uh, portray, you know. So when, when you find out that you are around unbelievers, you you come from among them, you know, and, and, and don't even be around them. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. Amen. All right. So let's move on to uh, chapter seven. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. So having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us, we have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. 
Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. For when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without, we're fighting. Within, we're, we're fears. Nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you. When he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. So I guess he wrote them a letter letting him know about the tribulations and the things that he was going through. And of course, when you hear about a brother or a sister going through some mess, of course, it's going to it's going to break your heart, you know, and he's saying, I'm not I'm not telling you this to condemn you. I'm not telling you this to make you sorrowful, you know, but he joys in the fact that his trials and his tribulations is for the laboring of the Lord. When he labors in the Lord, he gets attacked. And, 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 and that's what happens to a lot of us. When we labor in the Lord because of who we are, that's why he says, I come to you with boldness. He said, great is my boldness of speech towards you. And we just got through talking about the rod, the, the mouth, the rod of the mouth of Jesus. You know, when you got the essence of Jesus on you, his characteristics, you got his characteristics, his spirit in you and things like that. You are going to suffer tribulations, but you're going to do it in joy. You're going to do it in joy and happiness because you know that when you labor in the Lord, it's not in vain that you are bringing the kingdom of heaven on earth, that you are bringing the presence of God on earth that you are moving mountains, that you are clearing out valleys, that you are breaking down and tearing down the wicked. You are slaying the wicked, you know? So you will joy in it. In your tribulations, you will still smile. In your tribulations, you will still have happiness and joy and peace because you understand what it is you are doing when you labor for the people of God, not unbelievers, the people of God, people who choose to believe, people who choose, you know, to acknowledge the Lord God Almighty. So you go out there, you labor, and there will be people that will come. You will win souls for the Lord God Almighty. And they will choose to come and be a part of this family and be a part of what God is doing. And they will believe. But there are going to be unbelievers and their hearts are not going to change. Nothing about them is going to change because that is what is written. Everything is already written. That's why God... Jesus, the Lord God Almighty says, I am the beginning and the end. He knows exactly who is going to believe and who is not going to believe. He already knows. Our names are already written in the Lamb's book of life. So he, he done already wrote, written our names in the Lamb's book of life. And he already knows who's not written in that book. He already knows this. So you're going to joy in the Lord. Yes. You're going to joy in the Lord. You're going to, you, I mean, when you labor and those tribulations come and things come and the naysayers show up and the haterators show up and the Pharisees show up, you're still going to stand with your confidence, not proudness. Remember we talked about that yesterday. 
There's a difference between having a look of confidence and having a look of proud. We're going to have a look of confidence and we're going to know what's going on with us at all times. Our eyes will be open. Our ears will be open and we will joy in the Lord. We will, we will, we will shout unto the heavens and cry out like he says, shout unto the heavens and cry out. And Isaiah, we just read that. We shout and we're going to praise the Lord God anyway. We're going we're gonna to give glory to the Lord. And this is what Paul is saying. You know, we're going to tell our testimony. And sometimes our testimony is going to sadden each other's hearts. And we're going to, but, but, but we're not, we're not telling testimonies for you to say, oh, I'm sorry that happened to you. Oh, woe is me. No, I'm telling you my testimony to inspire you to know that you're going to get through what you're getting through. Don't feel sorry for me. That's what he's saying. He's saying, don't feel sorry. I know it, it's sad in you a little bit for a time, for a season, you know? He said, but don't be sorry. Don't be sorry for what I went through because I, I, I am happy. I, I, I am joyous in the Lord, you know? My testimonies that I have, I can tell my testimonies with no problem and I don't tell them to, for you to, 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 to drop tears. Say, no, look at who I am now. Look at where we are now, you know? This is to inspire you to know that you can get through what you are getting through. Amen. The Holy Spirit took me there. <laughs> okay. The Holy Spirit took me there. All right. So we are, uh, good morning. If you're just coming on, 2 Corinthians, we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, uh, starting uh, verse 9. We are at verse 9 now. It says, now I rejoice. Not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. So there he is again, distinguishing the two different types of sorrows. Later, he was distinguishing the difference between the love. The world has a certain standard of love, and then there's God's love. The world have a certain standard of wisdom, and then there's God's wisdom. And now he's breaking it down, saying there's a godly sorrow, and then there's a worldly sorrow. Worldly sorrow kills you. Like you will die. Worldly sorrow will bring you stress and anxiety and, and, and things like that. But godly sorrow brings you to repentance. When you when when it's godly sorrow, it, it it makes you want to kneel down on your knees. It makes you want to break down and seek the Lord God Almighty. So you know when it's godly sorrow because you 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 go to the Lord. You go to the Lord and you say, Lord, man, man, I'm I'm s I, I repent. Forgive me for, for this and that and what I've done, you know. But when it's worldly sorrow, and 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 and, and I guess you can take it to the difference between um Judas Iscariot and Peter, when Jesus Christ was getting ready to be executed on the cross, you know, he said, one of you is the devil and will betray me. And then Peter, Peter made a comment and Jesus said, well, you're going to deny me three times. And, and here you see the two difference. You see the godly sorrow and you see the worldly sorrow. The worldly sorrow was in Judas Iscariot. And what did Judas Iscariot do after he betrayed Jesus? He went and actually committed suicide. But Peter had godly sorrow. And he went and knelt down and asked for forgiveness and repented. 
You know, so there is a big difference. And this is what Paul is pointing out. So verse 11, it says, For behold, this selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you. Yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. And all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. All right, so Beverly says, folks in worldly sorrow run towards suicide and death. Godly sorrows drives you to the life in Christ Jesus. Yes. Yes. Amen. Thank you for breaking that down. I mean, I know sometimes I talk in a way where it's like people sometimes can't, you know, understand. So I thank you that you can understand me, Beverly, <laughs> and, and, and put it in a way where people can really understand it. Amen. Thank you for that. All right, so verse 12 says, Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did it not for his cause that he had done the wrong, nor for his cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. Therefore, we were comforted in your comfort, yea, and exceedingly the more joyed we for the joy of Titus, because his spirit was refreshed by you all. For if I have boasted anything to him of you, I am not ashamed. But as we spake all things to you in truth, even so our boasting, which I made before Titus, is found a truth and his inward affection is more abundant toward you whilst he remembereth the obedience of you all how with fear and trembling ye received him i rejoice therefore that i have confidence in you in all things so paul sent titus to these people Jesus is always going to send if 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 you if you got somebody that you got a group of people or people that needs to have comfort, they need to be comforted, they need to be uplifted, they need to be revived, you know, you're not going to be the only messenger like you you are to disciple Obedience will always lead you into certain areas, discipling people, discipling, teaching, preaching, and then you will you will end up with a person that you can send out and say, I need, if you can't travel to this place, you can send someone to that place or that place. And you'll be able to do it in confidence because you know that the teachings through you that the Lord God placed in you to teach them, you will be able to say, you, you are ready to go out. I need you to go here. And that's what happened here. He sent Titus. Titus went and comforted the people. He was able to comfort because of who, who his heart is and was. He was able, he said, because the spirit was refreshed by you all. So the spirit that was in Titus refreshed the people refreshed them so you you are a leader you are a leader in christ jesus god got you in a position to lead and you there are going to be people that come into your life that you will have to teach and train and and prep and and things like that and then you will be sending them out you will be sent because God got you going one way and then you will send them another. You will send them out. And so you got to start getting ready for, for the things like this. You, you have to stay in the word so you can know, so you can allow the Holy Spirit to use you to teach that person or persons. It, it may be more than one. You have to remember at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, 
He picked 12. He picked 12. And even in that 12, one was a devil. Now, if 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 y'all still don't understand the mystery of that, if y'all still don't understand the mystery of why did why did Jesus out of the 12 disciples, why in the world would he pick somebody that he know is a devil? That he knows is going to betray him. Because without that one, without the purpose and the will of God, and remember, remember we are learning that everything is made by God for God, even the evil and the wicked. And sometimes you have to have a Judas Iscariot in your life to push you to greatness. See, without that betrayal, without that betrayal, Jesus wouldn't have got arrested and Jesus wouldn't have been executed and he wouldn't have had to have been put on the cross. So he had to have that betrayal. It had to, it had to be there to set things in motion. And sometimes, even knowing what we are about to go through, we already know that just even being in the Lord, we're going to face tribulations. We're going to face sufferings. We're going to face all these things. So why not face it knowing what we are about to face? And he knew. He knew what he was, he was going to have to go through. And he had to have somebody that would betray him to set things in motion. And sometimes we have to do that. So that the word of God could be fulfilled. Yes. So that the word of God could be fulfilled. The will of God be fulfilled. His purpose, his plans be fulfilled. Our, the ministry that he's placed in you has to be fulfilled. And sometimes he has to have a Judas Iscariot in your life. So Jesus picked 12 and he knew one. He knew each one. So that is the key. He knew each one. So when you when 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 God is sending people in your life, he wants you to know them. He wants you to know them. And then you have that opportunity to pick your 12. You have the opportunity to pick your 12. And you let God help you choose that 12. But you will know who they are. You're not just going to be just randomly picking anybody. If you're randomly just picking and, and, and all of a sudden one day it was like, oh, well, we just clicked. Well, yeah, okay. So know them, know who they are. If you click, know, get to know them. Jesus knew each and every one of them. He knew who they were. He knew the purpose and the plan, and he knew why they are being chosen. Amen. So get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because if you are allowing the Lord God to mold you, build you, increase you. Like this expansion, expansion of territory doesn't just only mean land. Expansion of territory doesn't just mean, you, you got to understand, your, your territory probably have already been expanded, but now you got to make moves because because you've been sitting still or or waiting and things like that your expansion your territory has been expanded already so now you got to go out there and meet the people in your territory and now you got to go out there and 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 meet you know uh the ones and find the ones that that you will be discipling you know and, and set things in motion, your steps, taking the steps, walking by faith, making the moves, 
step by step, are putting things in motion. Like even me coming on live every morning is putting things in motion. You coming on and, and reading along with me is putting things in motion. You know, when we pray, we're putting things in motion. When we praise and we worship, we're putting things in motion. If God tells you, I need you to go somewhere and I need you to go here and he, and he's precise with it, obey, get up and go and do it. You're putting things in motion. And so your expansion of territory, if he, if he tell, cause he says, wherever your feet tread, think about it, wherever your feet tread, you own it, wherever your feet tread. So if he tells you to go somewhere, you go, go there. Because wherever your feet tread, you own that. That's your territory. That's your region. That's your land. You know? And so, obedience. Obedience and, and following and reading and praising and praying and, and, and just really, 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 really hearing the Lord God Almighty. And, and if, you, if, if you're left not understanding, go to him again and say, okay, Lord, I, I believe that I heard this in the spirit, but I, 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 I didn't quite grasp everything that was said. Can you say it again? You know, let him know you, you didn't quite grasp what was said and, and ask him to say it again. You know, if it's from the Lord, he will say it again. You know, because the enemy is always there trying to distort the messages that you receive from God. And so you want to make sure with clarity that you heard from the Lord God Almighty before you make any moves. But know that prayer, praise, worship, reading the word, you're making moves and you're moving things around. You're moving mountains. You're clearing out valleys. And you're, you're, you're doing, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. So get ready, get ready for your team. If you don't have one, get ready, get ready for the people that uh, will be in your life that you will, or that you're going to teach. Be ready for the people that will come into your life. That's going to pour into you and uplift you and, 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 and be, be there to comfort you. Be ready for the people that, that is going to be there that will pray with you, that will praise with you, that will cry with you, you know, and, and, and we're all going to end up in one place. <laughs> Amen. She said, Beverly says, speak Lord, thy servant is listening. Yes, yes, yes. <sighs> Get ready. Get ready, people. People of God, get ready. You know, I, I've been told whenever there's controversies or theories or things of the world that are going on and, and things like that, and because I'm not somebody that goes out and protest or because I'm not somebody that goes out and get revenge, and because I'm not somebody that goes out and, and, and speak loud for the people, I've been told that I'm not doing nothing. And the Lord God said, the devil is a lie because he places prayer. Prayer, if y'all really, really understand what prayer is, how it is the most powerful impact thing that you could ever possibly do. So before you go protest, pray. Before you decide that you want to try to take revenge, pray. Before you make decisions, ultimate decisions that's going to be life-changing, pray. I'm telling you, prayer... When you pray, we just read in Isaiah, he will have the mouth of a rod. The breath of his lips will slay wicked. 
just by him speaking, just by him opening his mouth and speak. When you pray, you pray, you open your mouth, you pray, you are doing way more than people who go out there and run out on the streets and protest. People who go out there and try to take revenge upon themselves. You, like, you, you are doing so much more when you set, you, you are, you could be in a standing position. You could be in a face down forward position. You, you could be in a sit down position. You could be in a position where your arms are raised up. But when you pray, there's different positions of prayer. And when you pray, man, you are doing far more than anybody. So that's the first thing, no matter what, the first thing before any decision, before any decision that you make, before choosing your disciples, before choosing anybody, before entering into anyone's home, before going to a, an event, before 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 you even come online and 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 read the words of God with me, pray, pray should be. Autom- I mean, that should be something that you automatically do the moment you start waking up. Pray and then follow it with praise and worship. Or you can do praise and worship, then pray, then praise and worship again. Those two weapons together, praise, worship, prayer. Your life will change. Everything around you will change. You will start noticing the changes. I am a witness. You will notice the changes. You will notice the changes in other people's lives because you prayed for them. (laughs) You will see it. God will show you. I heard you, daughter. I heard you, son. You know, he, you will start noticing the mountains that you have moved because you sought the counsel of the Lord God Almighty first. That you you had a communication with the Father first. You know? You will see, you will see, you will see. I've had y'all on long enough. If no one else is going to say anything. I really pray and hope that this uh, is inspiring you. Motivating you. Encouraging you. Uplifting you. And... uh Stay in the word, pray, 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 praise and worship the Lord God Almighty all day. If you find us and, and just allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, you know, lead you in this day so you can be conquerors and walk victoriously in the Lord Jesus, you know. So if no one else has anything else to say, I love you, love you all. Don't forget to invite and share, tag someone. Every morning we are on at 530 and we are reading the words of God and we are getting through the entire Bible. You know, a lot of people can't say that they've gotten through the entire Bible and we are actually doing it. So join us every morning, 530, share, tag, you know, Reach out to all your loved ones, the ones, you know, that you know that need this. And uh, I pray and hope you all have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, blessed day on purpose. And I will see you 530 in the morning.